Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at a no-name copy of a design that's done by Michael Zeba with the help of Ostap Hell, and it's a design that they did a number of years ago. It's a gentleman's knife, I think they called it the G2. Uh, their original version, I haven't been able to find it anywhere in stores otherwise. This is a titanium handled knife, they say it's S35VN. And it costs a reasonable amount of money, uh, high mid-50s U.S. at GearBest. They've got other versions of this, though, a G10 version that's on sale right now for $12.29, $12.29 for G10 9-seer 18 MOV steel. I've got a link for that down below. Most of the things that I'm going to say about this knife as far as, you know, the design goes and the size and everything, you know, it's going to be the same. Same type of functionality, the front flipper and everything. It's just G10 and 9CR18. So for $12.29, I recommend that thing all day long. So I've got a link down below and it's a referral link, so that does help with the channel if you use it. Um, there's a small shipping fee, like, like uh, 80, 60, 70 cents to ship to Canada. I don't know if uh, CBSA stops this kind of knife from entering Canada. The thing is, it's got decent detent. It, you know, the knife does not come out if you flick it like that, so they can't call it a uh, gravity knife or a centrifugal knife. But you know, I can't guarantee that it won't come into Canada. But I think for twelve twenty nine US, what is that? Sixteen seventy nine, seventeen, just under seventeen. Well, with shipping, seventeen canadian dollars so under 20 canadian dollars i think that's worth the risk for this style of knife now um gear best has also got this knife in three other colors that have that cityscape design that uh zeba and hell or hell did and so i've got links for those down below as well and those three are actually a little bit less money than this one what we have is a blue anodized uh titanium handle scale that they stonewashed and so it's got a really like beat up denim kind of look at it. I'll give you the price and everything for this uh, a little bit later in the video. For now just let me say one more thing. We have found, not we, uh, LTK over at Love Them Knives, he's got a lot of tests done on steel, like professionally tested uh, by proper metallurg with proper metallurgical tools by somebody that works with metal all the time, a professional. And they're finding that a lot of the knives, most of the knives that claim to have higher end steels, but they're no name knives and stuff, or Chinese brands uh, that are copies and stuff, they tend to be authentic S35VN. I don't know if this is authentic S35VN. I haven't tested, I don't know. I've done uh, a little bit of work with the metal to see what it feels like and stuff. It might be. I just can't say for sure. So be that as it may, uh, this knife is a true gentleman's knife. It's got a clip point, so it's a, it's a flat clip here instead of a, a radius clip point. Uh, a blade that's long and narrow, a very classic kind of gentleman's look to this knife. So let's get to the tabletop and take a good close look at this guy and uh, we can learn some things about its cousins, even the G10 version. So stick around, we're coming at you right now. Now, one of the things you might be interested in seeing is how this thing looks in a pair of jeans. So let's get a pair of jeans out here. And it is a different color blue, but uh, goes on there, sinks into about there. Look at that. To the naked eye, it blends in quite well. It's quite good indeed. You've got a little less than an inch, about three quarters of an inch sticking out. You know, a little under two centimeters. Not bad at all. I like this sort of squared off look on that pocket clip. Holds well. You heard the retention clip snap. So what we have is a front flipper with a lot of jimping up here. I'll give you a close up of that. Titanium handle scales that have a slight bevel to them. So as you can see right there, the shape of the handle. Uh, this side isn't thinner than the other side. It's just that it's got, you see the cutout along the edge for the uh, screw there. And on this side, it doesn't have that. So it's the same thickness on both sides with the liners. 
Blade centering is pretty good from the factory. Lockup is very good. It's almost exactly what I like a knife to be when it's brand new. And uh, I like these lines that are along the uh, side where it's radius. Well, it's not really radius. It's, it's stepped over tiny little steps. And now take a good look at that stone wash. That's a beautiful thing. We've got T8 screws in here and they are nice deep screws and they fit a T8 driver quite well. We've got a free spinning pivot. That's a con, but it was not that hard to put into a, a little vise with rubber uh, pads, hold it and take out. Uh, they didn't put a thread locker in there or anything, so it wasn't hard at all to undo that. Um, let me show you the pictures of the inside now. And as you saw in those pictures, it's uh, got a captured stop pin, so you don't see a stop pin at all out here. Well, you can just, you can see where it is right there. It's part of the blade, actually. Uh, so it's got a very clean look and it just works very, very well. It's got uh, stainless steel ball bearings, but a ceramic detent ball. A beautiful, beautiful thing. You've got a lock bar insert here. It's an over travel stop as well. So that's as far as you can push it to, uh, to uh, oh, I hit the camera. Hope I didn't scratch something up badly. Uh, so it opens very, very well, nice and smooth. Easy to adjust that tension if you want to. The pocket clip is right side only. Uh, and I'll show you pictures of the close up of the mating surface between the pocket clip and the, the handle. And uh, that's why the way it's milled out here, it'll only fit on the right side. Beautiful, beautiful thing. This design is just simply awesome. And uh, that jimping section is really, really long. So you could be comfortable with it. You could have your thumb way out if you want to, or just a little ways back, and you're gonna find some good uh, jimping retention there. Even if you're gonna put your finger like this, if you wanna do some more delicate work, and you know, if your fingertip is on that jimping, and that works quite well. Of course, you can sneak out further and do it that way as well if you want to. So the knife uh, looks really, really good with this full flat grind and that stone wash on it. And you can see the transition where the clip happens right after that jimping. And then it's a straight line down to the tip. It's a very good knife for puncturing. It's slightly rounded over on the spine. And bit nice belly, long straight section. Uh, they sort of did a sharpness trial, but they didn't make it quite far enough. Um, that's one small mistake. So this little sharpness trial right here should have come a little bit further down the plunge. Because the sharpness trial doesn't come forward enough, that's why you've got this odd transition right there. If I can get a focused close-up shot of that, I will. But there you go. Not bad at all. And uh, let's go over all of the specs now. The specs for this specific knife, I'm sure the G10 is going to be a little bit heavier, but the size is the same. 67 grams, 2.35 ounces, so not even two and a half ounces. That's a beautiful thing. The sharpness of the cutting edge from the factory, 125. <laughs> the average sort of that I'm seeing right now is about 195. So this is a quite a bit sharper from the factory. The sizes, the cutting edge, so tip to the end here, 8.68 centimeters, 3.42 inches. Blade length, so tip to the titanium, 8.85 centimeters, 3.49, so three and a half inch blade. Uh, the blade thickness, and I measured it right after the plunge started. So not this thickest spot on the Ricasso, but up here where it says S35VN, 2.9 millimeters thick this way, which is 0.114 inches. The blade depth this way before the clip point here starts, 1.68 centimeters, 0.667 inch, so two thirds of an inch. The uh, thickness of the edge behind the grind right there where my thumbnail is, 0.47 millimeters, which is 0 0.0185 inches. Very good thinness behind the grind. Uh, the grind angle on this guy, 21.2 degrees on this side and 22.9 degrees on that side. 
So I'm, when I sharpen this knife, I'll probably sharpen it to 20 degrees per side, maybe 21 degrees per side. Uh, we'll see. 20 is usually easier, especially if I sell the knife. And uh, maybe in uh, June, this knife might be for sale, but I've got to keep it until June in case the Patreon winner chooses this. If that's news to you, if you're a Patreon supporter, at the end, at the beginning of every month, somebody from from Patreon will win one of the knives that I reviewed in the previous month, and the winner gets to choose which knife they get. So if you want to become a Patreon supporter, patreon.com slash CCE, but don't become a Patreon supporter just because you can win a knife. Uh, support my channel if you want to support the channel, if you win or not. That's the kind of guys and gals that I'm looking for as Patreon supporters. Uh, back to the knife measurements. Handle. Handle length is 11.38 centimeters, 4.4 inches long. And um, the grip area, so this where it's flat, where it doesn't have any radius, 10.4 centimeters, 4.1 inches. The handle thickness, and I measured it right at the end of the handle, but behind the pocket clip, so how thick is it? We're looking at 8.9 centimeters, 0.35 of an inch, so a third of an inch thick. The next measurement is the handle depth, and so I measured it right at the end because it's biggest there. And it's the same as it is the knife depth when the blade is closed because the blade hides completely. 2.1 centimeters, 0.83 of an inch. And the total length of this knife is almost 8 inches, a tiny, tiny bit shy of 8 inches, about 20.3, 20.4 centimeters for the entire length of the knife. And it's a beautiful thing. It fits so well in hand. Very, very comfortable. There's no guard or anything. Uh, this isn't the kind of knife that you're going to use for... Uh, anything except for, you know, nice, gentle, delicate tasks. At least intentionally, you're going to plan for those kinds of things because it's a gentleman's folder. So great for cutting up your uh, lunch, you know, if you've got fruit or something that you want to slice up. Uh, a gentleman's folder isn't designed as a protection weapon. Uh, this is not that kind of thing. This is a gentleman's knife to show off a very cool knife, but still have something that's very functional easy to use and does a very good job. And so this full flat grind with a thin edge there, uh, the tip that's very precise, uh, this thing can do an awful lot of things very well. Some things, of course, it can't do. There's no knife that can do absolutely everything, even though some knife makers try to make that kind of knife. The price for this, well, this one with this uh, blue stone wash is the most expensive of the knives. At GearBest, there are six different knives of this style that you can choose from. So there's this one, and it's the most expensive one, 5470 uh, American, 7473 Canadian, just under 50 euros and just about 43 pounds. But uh, the other ones are a little bit less They're in the 40s. You've got titanium uh, with that cityscape on the face of the uh, handle. You've got that one in, they call it opaque cyan. Battleship Gray, and Baby Blue. They've got another version of this knife where it's shorter in the handle, shorter in the blade. They call it the Mini, and it comes in gray, either with a solid handle or they've got a cutout handle, a long cutout. And those are pretty much the same amount of money as the full-size ones. And the G10 one, like I said before, Right now, for the rest of May, $12.29. They've got 200 in stock as of this morning when I checked. So I think most of my viewers can buy one and get away with it, at least the viewers that want one. So the pros and the cons on this thing, it's a great design. Uh, Zeba and Hell did a great job making this design work, and it does work. It's an awesome shape and look and feel and usability. This specific version, um, there's a tiny bit of lock stick, not much at all, just a very tiny bit. I put a little graphite on there from a pencil and, you know, it's just fine. Um, I'm not that good as a flum flipper with my left hand as I am with my right. I just haven't practiced with my uh, left hand as much. So as you can see, it's awkward, but it's basically ambidextrous in that sense. Um, being the pocket clip just on one side, I think that's totally fine because nothing's ever going to catch on this thing. Can't guarantee it, but 
what's going to catch on it if it's in your pocket. So I wouldn't mind wearing this on the left side or the right side, and I did carry it on both sides of uh, both pockets on either side of my hips. Um, it's got the coolness factor. It's got solid lockup. It's got that distinct design, very light. It's got a free spinning pivot. So I mentioned that before, but it's not hard to overcome that at all because they didn't use thread locker. And um, it may be, but may not be authentic S35VN. But the cheap one is 9CR18. And there's no need to lie about that because it's a Chinese steel. But 8CR8, uh, 9CR18 MOV is better than 8CR13. And uh, so that's a very good steal for that price. It is a steal of a deal. I am ordering one for myself uh, because this one's probably going to sell <laughs> and I'll keep the G10 version for myself. Cons, well, it's a copy, but at least it's not a clone. They don't say anything on here about uh, trying to trick you into thinking you're getting an original Ziba design. So that's good. The pocket clip can be a little tight on some jeans. If your jeans uh, what I mean is, it might, depending on how the seam is made, it might have a tough time slipping on. Uh, there was one pair of my jeans where it was a little tricky putting it on, putting the pocket clip over my my pocket. So that may be an issue, might not be an issue, I don't know, uh, but the pocket clip does look sick. I really like it. It looks really, really good. Did I just try to talk like a youth from half a generation ago? Wow. <laughs> Anyhow, this is the knife that we're looking at today. Gearbest, whoa, I just hit my camera stand. This is the knife we're talking about today and its mini siblings available at Gearbest. That's where I got mine. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.